Hello, my name is Simon Norrington and I am a solution architect for Tricenters here in EMEA. The aim of today's session is to take a look at the newly released integration between Tricenters QTest and Tricenters Test Project. Tricenters QTest is our agile test management system and Test Project is our community-based automated testing solution. For those of you who are not familiar with Test Project, Test Project was founded in 2015 and acquired by Tricenters in 2019 as part of its community portfolio set of products. Test Project is a free automation solution that provides testing for web, API and mobile and it's based on Selenium and Appium under the covers. Test Project is a cross-platform web-based application which has local agents which can be installed on Windows, Mac and Linux. If you want to know more about Test Project, please go to the Tricenters website where you will see our, tri our Tricenters Test Project community and there you will find documentation, a forum and blog on Test Project. So let's take our first look at QTest and Test Project integrated together. So first up we need to go into QTest and this is the user interface for QTest, in particular I'm in QTest Manager here. And what you'll now see is in the nine box icon in QTest we have an entry for test project. If I click on this link for test project what will happen is we'll load up the test project in another browser tab for me. I'm using my user credentials from QTest it will log me directly into test project. Immediately you can see we've logged into the test project website and if I scroll down the page you can also see that we have a list of projects based on QTest projects that I have access to in QTest. So if I jump back into QTest and go to my project view here, here's the list of those projects that you are now seeing in Test Project. For today we're going to focus on our Tricenters Project EMEA project, so let's click on that link. And what you'll now see is Test Project has taken me into that particular project folder and we can see that we have a number of tests already pre-recorded here in the tool. So we've got uh, a couple for our online web store. We've also got uh, three tests here for our online banking application. Each of these tests can be run directly after recording. You can see we have the play button here. We can also edit them. We can also delete them and we also have a list of other actions that you can see here as well. Now tests can be run individually, as I say, using this play button. We can also group our tests into a job and that will allow us to run multiple tests as part of that particular job. But what we're going to do today is we're going to create a brand new test for you and then we'll show you how that test, once it's been created, is integrated with QTest under the covers. Okay, so our next step is to record a test. Now the test recording actually uses an agent that's installed locally on my machine. So there is my test project agent that you can see here. It's currently running in the background. And what this will do is it will capture what's happening in the application under test. And then once the test has been saved, that test is then uploaded into te the test project website. So let's uh, record a new test. So let's go through the steps to set up a new test. We're going to do a web test for today. Click next. I need to give us a name. So what we're going to do is going to test a part of a our online shopping application. There we go, let's click next. Now in terms of the application that we're going to test, I've already defined it as this online web shop that you can see here, but if I wanted to test a new application, I could click on the link here. So let's go with our online web shop, click next. Now I've got three options, record, edit, blank test. Today I want to record a new test, so let's click start testing. And what's now gonna happen is test project is gonna open up our application under test. Okay, we can now see our online shopping application has loaded up in our browser. And what we're now doing is we're using a browser that's been started up by Test Project and has been orchestrated by Test Project. So first up, on the left hand side here, you can see I've got this movable box. This is going to be highlighting the test steps that we're recording. So step number one is the we've launched our application under test. And then as I move my cursor into the application that we're testing, you can see that Test Project is picking up the different objects in the application and it's going to give me options to how I want to interact with those. So first of all, let's log into our shopping application. So let's click on the uh, login link that you see here. Actually, let's not click on it. You can see I've highlighted the, uh, the link itself. If I go over to these options on the right-hand side, I then can actually define a number of actions manually. 
So by default, it, test project would have picked up my click, but I can also get it to manually select the click. So it's identified the elements that make up that object. Then if I click on create, it will then carry out that action for me. So what you now see is we've updated on the left hand side that we've navigated and then we've clicked on the link and you can now see the screen's changed because now I'm focusing on my application. So let's log in. So let's provide my email to log in. Let's provide my password. Okay, we're adding my password here. Then we're going to click the login button. So you can see now it's captured my password. We've logged in. So let's now go to the jewelry section. So there's my link. Let's click on that. And what we're going to order today is this black and white diamond heart necklace. So let's click on the image. It will take me to the actual item in the shop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my shopping cart. There we go. Now I can go up to my shopping cart. There is the item that we've just placed into it. So let's uh, check out our shopping cart. So let's click checkout. So now the screen changes. Now it's asking for my billing address. So let's keep that the same. We are going to keep the shipping address the same. Shipping method will be ground, so let's just click continue. And then we want to pay by credit card, so let's click continue. And this is where I enter my details. So let's provide the name. And now let's put the card number in. change the expiry date put in the security card number there we go click continue just confirm my order so let's click the confirmation button there we go my order has been processed click continue to take me back to the home page and then to stop the recording we simply close the browser go okay so we've recorded our online shopping test for the jewelry section let's just run it to make sure everything is okay with it so let's go up to our online jewelry section test and click the run button here my local agent has picked up which browsers are available to me so you can see I've got a bit of a selection but for today I'm going to use Chrome running headlessly to run my test so just confirming that is the URL of our application under test. Just going to click on run. And what we now see is we've got a green status circle and that will then be updated with a percentage of how far the test is through running. So you can see we're up to 79% already and that should shortly be finishing. Yes, it has. It's just finished. So what's now happened with the integration between test project and um, QTest is if I go into my QTest now, if I go to my test project jobless executions test cycle, what we will now see is we have our jewelry um, test that we just recorded. So here it is, you can see um, my execution history. So if I scroll on down, there are the test steps, and we're actually reporting this as passing within QTest. So if I scroll to the very bottom, let's expand the number of rows that we can have in our test. There we go you can see that all of the steps that we captured in test project have been passed into QTest and we've got that step history being displayed here as well as the overall result. So that's one aspect of the integration between QTest and test project. Let's have a look at another part of the integration. Okay, the second part of the integration between QTest and test project is around the creation and execution of jobs within test project. Uh, what I can do here is I can create a job within test projects. So let's do that. And effectively what will happen is once I execute this job and the results have been generated, those results will then be stored in their own test suite within QTest. So let's uh, define our job here in test project. So let's have a web test. Let's give this a name. There we 
go to online shopping tests click next uh, which browsers do we want to run our tests against again I'm going to use Chrome and this time I'm also going to include Firefox running headlessly I'm also going to restart the browser before each test so basically we get a brand new instance of our browser so we're not getting any, any information being cached so let's click create so there is my online shopping tests job now what I can then do is I can drag and drop my tests that I've previously created into my job so there's my jewelry section let's grab my music test there it is and then lastly let's grab my books test so we're going to be running three tests as part of this online shopping test job now the other thing that I have set up between uh, test project and another tool is around slack integration so if I click on this uh, letter icon that you see here I can actually publish through the use of webhooks when my test starts and when my test finishes you can also see that we can also uh, limit it to reporting only failures into my slack but here's my slack webhook so this is the channel that I've got set up in my tricenter slack so let's select that click save so that is my job now created for me so let's now kick this off let's click run there we go and my job will be starting and if I dive back into my slack channel you can now see there is my online shopping test which I've just started so three tests which are jewelry music books are now being kicked off on Chrome and Firefox headlessly so test projects now going to run those tests and once that test has finished we can then start looking at the results not only in test project but also within QTest okay my tests have now finished running you can now see my slack channel has been updated to reference that my tests have now completed so we've got a hundred percent pass rate so that's the the view that uh, we're seeing in our slack channel so let's just minimize slack and then what I can do is if I come into the reporting part of test project here you can see if I just hover on the report section my job has successfully completed we've also got to the results of my tests but if I jump back into my Q test, what we can now see if I scroll on down, let's just uh, minimize that, is we have a brand new test cycle that's been created called Online Shopping Tests. And within that uh, test cycle, we have two new test suites, one for Chrome Headless, the other for Firefox Headless, both showing the results of my testing today through the integration with Test Project. And of course, this information can then be reported in my Q test insights, so we can have that holistic view. So if I just fire up insights, those test results that we've run through test project will be part of this uh, green column that you see here on the right hand side of my test results by day lastly let's jump back into our test project again let's go to the report section and what we see here is the reporting that's available in test project as well if I go down to this uh, link here the 25 executions we can see there is my online shopping test the job that just executed if I expand this you can see how many times this particular job has been run so you can see that we executed it today and if I expand this we can also drill down on the latest run we've only got the one and here is the results of that execution so we've got our pie chart here showing the 100% completion rate we've also got uh, the individual tests showing us uh, passing and what I can do is I can click between the different types of tests for example I've got uh, Chrome Firefox here but also I can see if I click onto the music test the steps have changed from the jewelry test and similarly if I go to books my steps are changing here so this is the reporting that's also available within test project so that completes our look at the integration between QTest and test project today if you want to know more about test project please go to the test project website where you can see platform information there's also the blog and there's also the forum as well for asking questions and I hope you found today's session of interest thanks a lot for listening bye